Hey YouTube, Untamed here. In this video, I'm gonna try to do a lightning fast comparison review between my personal 2019 Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro, of course in that voodoo blue, next to this 2020 Toyota 4Runner SR5. So both of these have the same exact four liter V6 tied to that bulletproof five speed automatic transmission. I think that's the most important thing to note from the beginning, okay? Both of them are extremely durable, extremely reliable. Both of them body on frame, vehicles, which is becoming almost archaic at this point. You just don't find that in modern SUVs. So those are the huge pluses of them being both Toyota 4Runners, of course. Both of them are still built, built out of Japan, which personally I think that is awesome. I think there's a lot of style points behind that. It hasn't been outsourced to Mexico or anything like the Tacoma was. Uh, so a lot of goodness there, and you can tell the Japanese take great pride in this vehicle here. So excellent quality all throughout. You know, the body gap panels, everything's perfect in my opinion. Every Toyota I've ever owned, it's always been exceptional when it comes to fit and finish in my personal experience, okay? So I could geek out plenty about that. So that is overall, big picture, a lot of comparison between the two of them. But it being an SR5, this is the bare bones, buttermilk basic 4Runner. And when you say that out loud, it sounds bad. But at the end of the day, I would, I would argue that this is almost truer to what Toyota has originally sent out, set out for the Forerunner to be from the beginning. This is, I think, closer to what, you know, that they wanted the Toyota Land Cruiser to always be. It's just very simplistic, very bare bones. You know, I would almost argue, even if it had roll-up windows, manual roll-up windows, it would almost add to the appeal of this one here. There's no additional bells and whistles, no additional frills, no fake hood scoop, no giant roof rack. Again, even, this, even the silver color almost adds to that simplistic appeal. So, the price points between these two are vastly different as well. So this is forty-three dollars or $44,000, brand new, if you were to get it brand new. And if you were to get a brand new TRD Pro 4Runner, you're looking at fifty-five dollars or 56000 So, a pretty big, sizable gap when it comes to the price tags between the two of them, right? $12,000-ish. So that's a lot. That can buy you a lot of off-roading goodies, an awesome suspension kit, and a number of other things that you would want to get. Wheels, bigger tires. You can easily make this what you dream a 4Runner could be uh, just with that money that you would save not getting a tier to pro. Granted, the resale value is not going to be that great. You never get the money back out of your modifications. But if you are the type to want to modify it to your heart's content, that would be the better option, I think. To be fair, even though you can modify this and make it ex extremely capable off-road, you're going to be missing some off-roading capabilities that this has from factory, right? You get multi-train selection here, you get crawl control, you get the rear center diff lock. It is just a little bit more capable out of the box, right? Even if it does have the same engine, same uh, transmission, out of the box, you're just getting more goodies, right? Here, I'll show you real quick. I'm not going to dissect it too much because a lot of you guys have seen this. So here is your multi-terrain selection up here and your crawl control. And then your A-track, of course, traction control and your rear center diff lock there. And of course your sunroof. Uh, whereas you don't get the sunroof, of course, in the SR5. One thing that I love, and I might be in the minority because of, of this, but I love that you get the manual, excuse me, mess, guys. You get the manual um, four-wheel drive selection here. So, you know, high two, high four, Low four, I like that a lot. You get your heated seats and your rear window roll down there in the middle as well. The only other difference I think mainly is you get the TRD stitching in the headrest. Otherwise, largely similar, you both get tan headliner uh, between the both of them there. It being a 2019, this is pre the tech refresh. So you get the tiny little screen over here. I think it's six inches. A tiny little screen over here, no Apple CarPlay, no Android Auto, but they both have the most simplistic <laughs> um, climate adjustments, right? So you get your fan speed over here, your fan mode in the center there, and the temperature on the right. Super easy, super simplistic. You can't mess it up, and I love that about it. But it's not climate control. You don't just set it and forget it. <laughs> Whereas in 2020, they did implement the climate control where you can set it and forget it uh, to a certain temperature. But the SR5 over there, same exact thing, even if with it with the being a 2020 plus. The biggest and most notable difference when you first get in is right here, this center stack here is ancient and a half. Super, super low resolution. It looks terrible by comparison, where you get the up, updated, upgraded resolution in the center stack of the 2020 plus. A lot of people 
prefer uh, a 2020 and up because you get Toyota Safety Sense, right? You get that radar that goes right here. Even on the TOD Pro, they got it in 2020. Then over here, I'll show you what it actually looks like. This is for your adaptive cruise control. Uh, so if you're pacing a vehicle behind or behind a vehicle, it'll keep up with it and it'll, it'll slow down if, if you're coming up on it too quick. So a lot of safety features were added beyond that too uh, for Toyota Safety Sense. But this, I almost prefer it because it's, you know, there's a there's a strange level of appeal of having a turnkey versus you know the the push to start over here. Um, the simplicity, less nannies, and I hate saying it like that, but less nannies are within the 2019 here. Same for the, the Tundra, of course. So that's just me personally. I've really grown to appreciate less is more, um, but all while having the off-roading goodies and capabilities of the TOD Pro, of course. Never been a fan of these alloy wheels, but I mean, you're not trying to scream in anybody's face. Whereas, you know, these are aftermarket, these are the TE37s, but they do come with some pretty cool black TRD wheels out of the factory, out of the gate. So, I'd be curious to know how many of you guys actually went the direction of the SR5. You know, what made you choose that over the different trims? And what made you choose that over the TRD Offer, the TRD Sport, or of course, the TRD Pro? Was it just, you know, the, the monetary savings or or was it the availability? Because if you're gonna get a, if you're gonna get a TRD Pro, you're like I said, you're gonna be on a wait list. You're either gonna be on a wait list or you're gonna be subject to a greedy dealership markup of $10,000 or more. Um, but MSRP deals do exist. Good dealerships still exist. It's just much harder to find. Whereas that, you could go to your local dealership and you probably swoop one up, either on the lot or inbound to the dealership pretty easily. So. There you have it guys. I just want to do a wave top. Actually, you know what? Excuse me. I'm sorry. Let me pop into the SR5 and just show you real quick. Very similar, of course, but you do have the updated center stack there with that way better resolution and a bigger screen here in the middle. No JBL sound system. Even that 2019 came with a JBL sound system, but I would argue you're not buying these for their sound system. I do not like that rotary dial four wheel drive. Never been a fan of that, it just feels synthetic. Whereas I do love the manual shifter over there in that Pro. But otherwise, very similar. Of course, like I just showed you over there in the Pro, very, very similar. It does have a, a gray center insert with the black surrounding it. No sunroof and none of those off-roading goodies up there. All right, now we'll wrap up the video. So let me know what your thoughts are. As always, I appreciate you watching. Until next time.